Hello everybody, my name is Walter and today I want to show you how you can build my tileable analog combination lock as well as three examples of how you can implement it for your everyday need. And well, let's just run, uh, jump right straight into it and start with the first design, which is a very straightforward with an item frame for the analog input and three buttons for the starting of the whole input process, then a button that says that you have inserted the right combination and now you want to go to the next digit, and of course a reset button to reset the entire thing and lock or close the door or whatever you have run this into. As you can see the combination for this one is 1, 2, 3 and 0. For this, just put in an, an item in the item frame here, which is at the moment at the 1 position. Then start the whole thing and say, since the first position is alright, let's go to the second digit, which is 2, then the third digit, which is 3, and for the last digit, which is, which is the 0, I have to remove the item again, and then the whole thing unlocks. And every other kind of combination will not unlock this thing here. And just to lock this again, I simply press the reset button and the whole thing is reset. Nice and simple. That's the first example. The second example I have for you is a music lock, which works by simply putting those music discs in this lock here, in the right order, and waiting a bit for each change. And once the last one is in here, the whole thing unlocks. And to lock it, I just have to remove it again. And that's how you can use this kind of lock. And the last example is working with a trap chest here, which works by first removing all of the black items at once, then the white ones, then putting in the black ones again, and then the white ones again as you can see here. And any other kind of changes will not work. So if I invert the order, for example, the whole thing will not work. It will only work if I do it in the right order. Oh, this was a bit too fast, it seems. We'll have to wait a few second in between each change. And once we have done this, the whole thing unlocks. And of course there's somewhere a set button that closes the entire thing or locks it again. So anyway, that's the third example. Now let's talk about the size requirements. The whole thing is a very modular design, which means that for each digit you need two blocks of length plus one on each end. So in total it's the number of digits times two plus two for the length. The width of the whole thing is 8 blocks, and the height of the whole thing is 5 blocks. This line up there is just the line that goes to the lamps here and is not really part of the actual lock itself. So that's the size requirement. Last thing to talk about is the actual resources. You will need normal blocks, of course, then a slab or two, depending on how you set this up. I will talk a bit about this later on. Then for the each digit you will need 5 redstone dust, 2 redstone torches, 3 redstone repeaters, 3 redstone comparators and 6 hoppers. Although depending on your situation this might be a bit less, but this is the standard configuration. And then you will need additionally some redstone dust, at least one torch, 2 redstone repeaters, one comparator, probably a sticky piston, then some kind of uh, device where the output goes into, in this case I'm representing this with a lamp, then a few buttons for the inputs, at least two droppers, three hoppers, one chest, and then some kind of analog input, in this case represented by this item frame here. All of those depend a bit on the actual configuration you're using, but more about this at the end, after I showed you how to build the modules, then I show you how to 
configure those three designs here. But anyway, that's enough of the prologue, so let's show you how to build those combination locks here. Okay, so let's start by building the modules. For this, as you can see, I already prepared the analog input, represented by this item frame here. Each of those modules is, as I already mentioned, two blocks wide. And we basically have two designs that are alternating, plus a third design, which is for a signal strength of zero, which has to be built a bit different, but I will come to this later on. So the first module, as you can see, starts by comparator, then right in front of it some redstone. The next module has the comparator one block further down, as you can see here. And that's basically the pattern you repeat for the whole thing. For now I will build a four module design. Then the next row of blocks is also alternating with two blocks down for the first module, then two blocks up for the second and so on. As you can see here. Then on those blocks you put redstone dust and in this direction you put down comparators on the subtraction mode. Then next put a zigzagging pattern of normal blocks like this. On the ones down there you put comparators again. On the ones up you put redstone dust like this. Then you grab hoppers, place them behind those comparators here. Those basically define the signal strength you need to unlock the specific module here. Then we go down and place blocks below like this. Grab a few repeaters and place them on top of those. Then blocks right in front of those repeaters. Yeah, come on. Of those repeaters here. Then some torches to the front. Next grab some more blocks and place three on top of those modules, as you can see here. Grab some redstone dust. And finally a few more repeaters on two ticks each, like this. And to top it off, put some torches to the side, as you can see here. And that's basically that part done. So now let's start with the part where the actual magic comes in, which is the hopper part, as I like to call it. And for this, starting from this first torch here, go one to the front, then one down, then two to the side here and start placing a row of hoppers going along this line until you are one further than the last torch here. Then grab a chest, place it on this hopper here, a hopper running right into it, then one hopper going down before each of those torches here and finally a line of hoppers going in this direction, as you can see here, two further than the first module, like that. Next, grab your droppers and place them going upwards into this very first hopper here. Then, go to this hopper here, take an output with a comparator, and this is basically where the output of the entire thing is, so once an item is in this hopper here, the whole thing will be unlocked. And that's the entire thing for this. Just remember that this uh, computer here only produces a signal strength of one. So if you want to take an output, you will have to use a repeater at some point right there. But anyway, that's the output. Now for a bit more of the control circuits, place blocks on top of those gaps here, then repeaters in between, like this. Next place blocks on top of those redstone lines here, and in between, as you can see there. Again put repeaters in those gaps here, then 
place a block here with redstone on top, block to this side, a torch on top of this block, then a block diagonally like this and some redstone on top. And that's more or less the entire thing done. So now how do you use this? Basically we have later on some kind of input that's going into this block there, into those droppers here. This is basically our start button. And of course you will have to put some items in those droppers here. So this is basically our start button. Then we will need the next button, which is basically made by uh, weak powering this block here, or more precisely weak powering this block in there. So for the moment let's just represent this by a little design like this, which will now produce a four tick pulse going right into this torch here, which will be exactly enough time for an item to go from one of those blocked items, uh, dropper, uh, hoppers here, into the next. And if you want to implement a reset button, you will have to strong power this block here. So for this, just place a slab there, put a repeater here, and then run a line of redstone from wherever you have your reset button. And that's basically the reset button, which then works by, un uh, by locking each of those modules and then unlocking the top row of hoppers here. But anyway, let's now start by inputting the numbers. So let's say I want the combination 1, 2, 3 and 0. For this, the first module will have to be activated, which means that this torch must be on when I have a signal strength of 1. As you can see, this is at the moment how it's set up, due to the fact that there is no, hopper, uh, no item in this hopper here. Then we want the second to be on 2 signal strength, which means that now we will have to put some items in here. And as you can see, a single item is enough for this. The next module we want on 3, which means that we now have to put in half a stack, which represents a signal strength out of this comparator here of 2. So basically uh, the signal strength of this hopper here is 1 lower than the signal strength you need to unlock this module. Which means that for the zero signal strength I want to have, I will have to actually change a bit in this design here. And the changes are rather simple. All you have to do is just remove those blocks here, the redstone down there, replace this comparator by a repeater, and put some redstone down there. And don't forget to remove this torch there. And since it's not needed, you can also remove those blocks here. So all you basically take is an output from this signal line here, empower it with a repeater, and then run it directly into the torch back there. And as you can see now with the signal strength of zero, this signal is on. Once I put an item in here again, it will turn off again, just like it's supposed to. Now how does this entire thing work? Basically by starting it, I put an item, I let it transport an item up here, into this blocked hopper here. Then once I have input the right signal strength, as you can see here at the moment, and I start the next digit, all it does is temporarily disables uh, or enables those hoppers from working. Then the item goes further down. And since this hopper down here is blocked due to the correct signal strength, the item will go into the next blocked hop uh, drop, uh, hopper here. And if I were to start, uh, give it the next pulse here, this 
dropper here is not stopped or uh, not blocked due to the wrong signal strength for this module, which means that the item will flow down here and back. So this is basically how this entire thing works. And the reset button works pretty much sim uh, similar to this. All it does is put all of those uh, signals here in the false mode and then also enables the transportation of the items in the top row here. But anyway, that's basically how this thing here works. Now the last part is showing you how I modified this part here for those three examples from the beginning. Okay, so for the first design all you have to do is relocate those buttons here to the front and also take the signal, the output signal back there and transmit it to the front to those lamps here or to a door or whatever you want to use this for. The rest is exactly the same as before. For the second design, all you need to do is use a butt switch to detect changes in the input signal strength and use this to trigger the start mechanism and the next digit mechanism, which basically means that those two buttons here are combined and connect to changes in the input signal strength. And as you can see here, I also removed the reset line since it's not really needed. Due to the fact that I set it up that once I removed the last um, record here, the entire thing will have input a wrong uh, signal and will be done with it. But that's this part done. And for the last design, I have down here a piston, which will be triggered once I open this trap chest here and then give a short signal in the start mechanism here. And then the next part is similar to the second design here, a butt switch, which detects changes in the signal strength and will trigger the next signal part, uh, sig next digit mechanism. And up there we have our reset button which works just like it's supposed to, so nothing special about this. Now just one thing I want to mention about setting this one here up. One thing you have to keep in mind is that you must make sure that if you remove one stack you must not have any changes in the output signal strength. Otherwise this would be detected as a signal strength change and the whole thing would try to go to the next digit which most probably will be not the signal strength you actually need. So just make sure that in any configuration that might be part of your actual combination, removing one stack or adding one stack will not change the signal strength. Okay, so that was how you can build my tie label analog combination lock as well as those three examples here. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and well, see ya!